get to meet for the first time my wonderful illustrator who illustrates all the, the Wally stories, Brianna Osaseri. And one of the things that is of great interest to me, when I write new characters and new scenes in my stories, I have a vision in my head of what they look like and how they sound and all that. But it's really fascinating for me to see how another talented artistic spirit will, will read those words and come up with visual illustrations for that. So I'm, I'm interested to hear from Brianna how she goes about taking the, the words that I write in, in the books and turns that into visual illustrations. So uh, can you give me some ideas of how, how you go about that, Brianna? Yeah, for sure. So definitely when I'm first starting out, I have to read the text top to bottom, specifically focusing on the scenes that I will be illustrating. Or if, if a scene sticks out to me in particular, I'll make sure to make a note. And I'm like, that could be a really cool illustration if he hadn't already pointed out already. And then when I'm reading it, I'll go in and highlight and make notes, especially if, depending on if it's a certain mood that happens in the scene, if it's really, there's a lot of tension or if there are characters meeting for the first time, anything to point out, a lot of my illustrations are character focused. So when it comes to how characters talk to one another, their attitudes, the kind of like language that they use, because I know some of the characters have very specific accents or different things that distinguish their voices from others. Anything that can help me figure out the personality of those characters, I will take on to the character designs because a a character that is like for example big sandy who is really like wise and regal he carries himself very differently than a really like grouchy like bluebeard who is really cunning and kind of like tenacious but then also has an evil aura even though he's a much more complex er uh, character than that anything that could oh in addition to that if the character is like a more a good character or a morally good character that helps the main characters. They'll have more like softer features like Willie, for example. He has a nice rotund belly that's like round that points to, oh, this is a friendly character. I shouldn't be intimidated versus like a Bluebeard who his I added like sharp edges and features. You, like, you can also like point that out with characters like if you compare Sean Agnew and Peter Vanderbank who have the same kind of outfits but one is like more like sad looking, like a sad puppy with more rounded features versus Sean who has more like like sharp angles to his shoes all the way down to his jacket. Similar to that, Bluebeard has really spiky, has a really spiky beard and kind of like a more intimidating wider presence versus Big Sangi who is more leaned back and relaxed. He likes to ponder. So his pose is more of, of a wise person trying to walk along the beach. I love all those details you mentioned. And another thing I wanted to um, hear from you is how the kind of collaborative process we go through. That if we've both decided, okay, it'd be a great scene, let's have the scene of these four fishermen in a boat out in the loch about to trying to catch a, a fish. What you often do is then think of different angles different view and what you send me are what you call thumbnails so talk a bit about how, how we go from the overall concept to then get what the actual composition of the image will look like mm, for sure so when i'm going about a scene i try to think about what kind of perspective do i want the scene to be in or rather how can i play around with that with the perspective to kind of give a different emotion or feeling. For example, a lot of my illustrations I like to depict from the character from the back because it kind of gives everyone a, as if they are in the scene with that character, looking onto what that same character is looking at. Versus if, if I want a scene to be from a certain character's perspective, if the character is shorter or maybe an innocent fish, then I I try to play around with what if that the view is looking up onto the scene as if you were that character. So I, when I go about compositions, I really try to either invigorate the as if the reader is in the scene or try to 
encapsulate the grandness of the environment. If the, for example, some some pages or illustrations will depict rolling hills or grand castles. So I want to really emphasize that grand scene. So I'll take the perspective and put, pull it all back so that the characters themselves are quite small because they are insignificant compared to the grand environment that they are encased in. Yeah, I, I love that. So in, in Golden Fable 2, which is the backstory of Jade C. Dong and the Fisher Golem, how Jade fell out with Catalysmo, the great translator. In some of the early illustrations, Brianna did an incredible job of showing the detail of what Jade C. Dong looks like, his hair and his costume and outfit, and this other Fisher Golem character. Um, and we see them in great detail. But then later in the story, they have to hike for days up into the mountains to the threatening Grachmandor castle, which is this massive castle. And Brianna did an incredible job of showing that castle with cliffs on either side and a waterfall, and then the, the causeway that walks up to the castle. You can see Jade and the Fisherbone as tiny little characters, and yet you can still tell that's who it is because you've seen the you know, in detail, but it, it gives this wonderful uh, perspective. So that, that I, I like that. The other thing, I, I love the way you play with light. But in, often in your illustrations, you're trying to figure out, well, where is the source of light coming from? And so what would be the best angle to make that? So tell me more about how you figure out the, the lighting of the illustration. Mm -hmm. I want to, so when it comes to lighting, I think about contrast. I want the focus of the, of the illustration to have the most contrast versus every, everything else like just, that's filling in the environment that has less contrast. So when I position, say, the sign in a drawing or maybe the light source, I want most of the light to either hit the main, either the main character or the main focus of the drawing directly, so they'll have the most light in the darkest shadow. Or, say, in another drawing where I'm depicting uh, people catching a fish, I have the light in a way that is behind the main character, so it gives a, so it gives me a way to give a really bright halo around the main character, so that your attention is drawn to there because you have to have a bright halo, but their shadow is really dark. So again, playing around with that contrast in order to point the viewer's eye to what they should be focused on, and then they can take in what is either happening between the characters or the, or the rest of the environment that the scene takes place in. Yeah, I, I love that, and that, that, that jumps out to me, for the, the way you use light. Um, and again, from it, the la illustration five in Fable One is of this little, nervous little golem gilly, gilly taking the two humans inside the gome cave. So he's small and they're big, but they've never seen anything as amazing. So the whole, um, the, the, the illustration is from down below. So Gilly's in the foreground looking quite big. And then the humans are, are way up behind and the lighting, uh, it gives a, it just gives a, a magical quality, which I, I really like. Here, another thing that I wanted you to talk about is um, because we were trying to keep the overall cost of the little fable books reasonable, so they're all under 10 bucks, um, to do that we were limited to only have five illustrations inside the book. So the cover can be in full colour, which is magnificent because I, I love your the subtle palettes you use are just what, engaging. But we had to have just, just black and white illustrations. Um, and talk to me about how, how you still try and get depth and complexity and interest in the illustrations, even though you're restricted to black and white. Mm -hmm. When I'm reading, I really want to, if there's a scene that sticks out to me, whether it's a pinnacle scene or a turning point, kind of like a nice, like either rising action, climax, falling action, conclusion kind of thing, that's, what, that's where my brain is thinking thinking about what would be a nice introduction to the main protagonist of the book versus like what is would be a really good conclusion image that still leads the reader wanting something more. Of course, the text helps with that. But then also illustrates something about 
the change that happened to the main character or one of the main characters toward the end. So with that thinking, I want to make sure to have, well, one, have, have illustrations that are kind of evenly spaced throughout the book, but then also not restricting myself to that. I found this an incredibly fun project working with Brianna because um, not only does she bring to life um, my characters and the scenes, I'm astonished because Brianna did not grow up in Scotland and a lot of these scenes are in the countryside of Scotland and hopefully it's made somewhat easier for her because I, I describe things in a fairly uh, detailed and compelling way but I've also I've sent Brianna pictures of my childhood photographs and of when I go on vacation so that she knows what the kind of colour palette is in a grey gloomy uh, glen or valley in Scotland uh, but I think you do a great job of depicting even things you haven't maybe ever seen in real life like a dry stained dyke with moss on it which is are everywhere in Scotland but uh, I think you do a great job of of, of that mm -hmm. like all the images that Dave either has in his collection or like or maybe he'll find Hulk is fine when he is like searching for references for me I always take them and I have them in a mood board actually when I was desi first designing Wooly the main character of the whole thing I actually looked up old Scottish men so I could figure out like how their faces fell or maybe their, their features of their eyes and their noses I've car just carried on those kind of facial characteristics into many of my of my gome design so that's probably where that kind of authenticity comes from but then also it's been made so much more easier for me having someone that you know lives there and it has like great images from from modern day but then also to the past that i always just keep in a mood board that i make sure to reference all the time with each illustration especially if it is taking place in scotland i love to hear that brianna it, for, to me in the visual art you you bring so many layers and textures in the color palette and the light and the composition as a writer the tools I use, I often, if I'm describing a new scene or a new character entering a new scene, I, I think of it in all five senses. What would it look like as you walk into the cellar? What would it smell like? What would it sound like? What would it feel like? What would the air even taste like? So if you think of it in those five senses, and I often, like your mood board, I'll write down all the adjectives in, in all five senses until I've got pages of them. Now, I don't use them all, but I'll, I'll pick them out and just think of phrases that just so that, as a reader, they just get drawn into what that looks and sounds and feels like. And the thing that really amazes me about your work is, even though you're only working in the visual medium, you still bring in the sound and the smell and the atmosphere and the taste of a scene by the way you describe it so that's i don't know how you do that but i i i, I appreciate that mm. yeah i think whenever when you have all those descriptors it really helps in figuring out the kind of overall mood of the scene but then also kind of the natural elements that i can use if it's either if it's if it's a dramatic scene or if it's like taking care uh, taking place in like a forest, I can use leaves or flower petals in order to help direct the eye of the viewer, but then also create a kind of like fantasy atmosphere. If it's more so of a boggy kind of swampy or glen kind of environment, I then use the aspects of that environment either the. Uh, grass reeds or even like fog. Fog is like my best friend when it comes to a lot of the illustrations because they, can, they mean so much. It can either tell about the temperature of the place or rather the mood of the place or set some sort of like tension. So anything that I can gather from the descriptors that you use, the kind of environment that it is, I will pick out and use that in order to convey the mood or what, convey the mood but then also be authentic to what kind of environment that I'm in. So that's really my main thinking but then of course if it's in a 
depending on what time of day time of day it is, it will tell me where to place my light source, and then that will then therefore feed into how I position my characters in order for if I want certain parts of them or like their faces should be caught in the light, I need to make a reference to the time of day of the scene, which is very liberal, but then I, I try to p creatively position the characters or play around with how I position them in order to uh, call attention to them or call attention to whatever they are observing in their environments. One of the projects that Brianna and I are working on between now and the end of the year is one I'm particularly excited about. I mentioned earlier that in the Gome, the Gome fables are shorter illustrated side stories from the main Wally stories and we've done each one uh, with beautiful cover covers relatively short they're all about 80 pages 10 11 chapters and they have five black and white illustrations however the first five fables I've done actually form a kind of complete story arc they're individual but they connect with each other and so I have hoped that we could put all five together in one book and have all 25 illustrations inside the book be in colour as well. And so I've, I'm hoping we can persuade my publisher to let us uh, produce a collector's edition book of all the first five fables with all the illustrations in colour. And I just wanted to hear from you, Brianna, if you've got any interest in doing that project. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's funny because before I started on the Gone Fable project, I had actually been working exclusively in colour for quite a long time. So when I was approached for this project to do it instead in black and white, it was kind of, I had to rewire my brain and, re and figure out how to do that again. But in reality, it was kind of it was kind of like really good for me in a way because with the less tools you have as an artist, the more creative you can be. The more limitations, the more creative you can be. So when it comes to now that I'm used to working in black and white, we are three and a half books in now. The idea of working in color again it does bring me a lot of joy because I do love color. It's funny. It's funny to know that I. That's a, a stellar J which is annoyed that we are having a conversation because it wants to come down and feed on the suet. So this is just, uh, that he just flew away. He, he, he'll wait till we've finished. So sorry to interrupt no, you. No, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I was, just, I was just reflecting on, when I first started drawing, I actually worked in black and white because uh, it was cheaper to work with a pencil and paper or rather than like get any colored pencils. So it's funny how my origins came, came all the way back around for this Fable project. But in the meantime, I developed a sense for color and I love how color allows me to convey mood and emotion, but then also highlight different details of someone's outfit that might not be too obvious in black and white with that limitation. So I'm very excited to go back and explore how all these illustrations will be even further revived with color, as, as if breathing a new life into them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks. Uh, as I say, this is a wonderful ongoing collaboration and um, I, I should warn Brianna and my readers that I've got ideas for at least another. I've written the first five fables, three are published. Brianna's working on the illustrations for Fable 4. I'm starting on Fables 6 through 10 because there are just so many wonderful little nuggets of stories in the fantasy world of Wally that I'm looking forward to bringing to life and then having you, Brianna, bring them to visual life. Mm -hmm. Oh no, you're telling me I get to work on this project for even longer time? One that I have enjoyed for two years now? Oh no, what will I do? No, I'm so excited for it. I'm completely down to working as, as long as you'll have me, really. I've enjoyed working on these fables and the rest of illustrations and character designs for the Wooly series and I don't intend on stopping anytime soon. That's great to hear. All right, thank you very much. <laughs>